and hello everyone welcome back to another love 2d tutorial so in the previous tutorial we worked on the player collision so if a player flies and they hit an asteroid then pew the player explodes in this tutorial we'll be adding lives to the player so once the player explodes instead of the game just ending they have a few more lives they can spend before the game is completely over so let's get started with that. First, I want to give you an example of what we currently have. So if we were to go here and say love dot, this is what we currently have. There goes our asteroid off screen. So it should appear out about there somewhere. Yeah, and boom, we explode. And we just kind of continue. Just very boring. However, when we explode, that shouldn't happen. Or when we hit something, that shouldn't happen. In fact, this should happen. So this is an example of what we'll be doing. So as you can see at the top, our player lives are there. When we hit an asteroid, the player lives, they go red, they disappear, and we start in the middle of the screen again. And we can use up all our player lives until we are no longer there. Once we are no longer here, then game ends. The last asteroid does not explode once we hit it. That is to prevent a bug, but you don't have to worry about that bug because I'm fixing it here for you anyways. But let's get started. So first we want to now take in the num lives. So how many lives the player should have. Then down here we can just say lives is equal to num lives or by default they can be free. So if you don't pass in a number of lives, it will be free by default. Next up, let's draw the player lives. So maybe right here underneath draw, we can say draw lives. This is a function that takes in self and faded. Cool. We can copy a lot of things from this player draw. So if you do not mind, I am going to copy basically everything from here because a lot of this code is copy paste from what we already do in draw. Because first we set the opacity, depending on if it's faded, the opacity will change. And in here is where it fades a little bit from what we do usually against what we want to do. But we'll still keep a lot of this. For example, this right here, we want to keep this. So let me just delete this part here and this laser part as well. We can keep this polygon and this color, we can remove the debugging because we will be doing debugging on it. And we can also remove all of this. And now we have a bunch of the code already given to us because we have already coded a lot of this. Nice, let's just indent this to uh, there. That's much better. Now, first we want to say what color our life should be. Because if we go back to this example I have, and I can just move it over. Now, as you'll see, if we have three lives, then it's white, the same color as the ship. If we hit an asteroid, then it becomes yellow. And if we hit an asteroid again, where we only have one life left, if I don't miss the asteroid, which I did again, my aim is terrible. And now it will be red because, hey, you should watch out, buddy, you only have one life left. And that's what we want to do here. So we want to set the color depending on the amount of lives the player has. So first we can say if self.lives is equal to two. So if they have two lives, then we can copy this right here, paste it there, and we'll modify it in a second. Then we can say else, and this will also contain an if and an else. So we can go like this. And then we can just copy this and paste it here. And we can remove this. Now, if they only have two lives left, we want to make it one, one, and then 0 0.5. And this will make it a kind of a yellowish color. If they have one life left, then we want to make it red. But not completely red, just a little red. So it will be red and then 0 0.2 green and 0 0.2 blue. 
and in here if they have three lives so if they have three or more lives in this scenario because this is two and then one if you want to add like five lives you can maybe add more colors or you can just make them all white until it hits two and then it will change color anyhow if they have one it will be red and if they don't have two or one if they have three it will be white now in the draw lives we need basically to get the x and y positions or to give it a default x and y position you can make this like a more globally state one like put it here or even put it here it doesn't really matter too much in this scenario i just want it here at the top of the screen so i'm going to do an easy local x pause y pause is equal to 45 and 30. so x would be 45 and y would be 30. so 45 from the side 30 from the top then we can create a for loop so for i in one to self dot live so the amount of lives we have and we want to basically draw three lives so we can just plop that in there because the lives are the same shape as the spaceship and we can go if we are exploding so if self dot exploding then and then if i is equal to self dot lives so the amount of lives we have so we don't want this to happen if we have more less lives on the screen than what we currently have or more you know then you want to basically make the heart completely red so love dot graphics dot set color and then one zero zero so basically once we explode then it should change the color of the spaceship to pure red until the explosion is over in which case it will switch to whichever colors are here cool then down here since we can't just draw the spaceship on the same position or at the same position everywhere we need to specify a few things here to make the the lives go on different locations because if we don't then the lives here they won't be free lives like I, I wish I could show my cursor here but there won't be like free lives there there will only be one and two others on top of it so we need to specify where to position it so instead of self.x here we can go and say i so the current index we are on or the current position times x position and this will give it its wanted x position and then as for the self.y, since the y will never change unless you make it go in a x direction instead of a, or in a y direction instead of an x direction, then the y will never change. So y pause. But if you wanted to, you could make the heart go from top to bottom instead of from left to right. It depends on what you want. Personally, I think going from left to right is perfectly fine. But once you have done that, then boom we are basically ready to go now we also need to remember that we don't want these to change angle with the spaceship you could there's nothing wrong with it it's just if you make it change angle with the spaceship then that it could kind of make the player a little bit confused about like while he's playing and suddenly he sees the spaceship hearts moving as well. It could be cool, but it could be very distracting. Personally, I think it's too distracting and I'm going to remove it. But you don't have to if you think it's a cool feature. Instead, we can go here, select all of these. And remember this view angle we created here at the top? That is the default angle our spaceship is always at. So we can just specify view angle instead. So now it will always face 90 degrees and never change. But if you want it to change, then you could, then you can 100% do that. I just don't care to make it change. Cool. Next, before we continue, I would like to go to globals and make sure this is here. Just to make sure that is there. So if you forgot about this, just put it there. Nice. So next up, we can just go to the main file and let's draw our lives so let's go here and we can say 
player colon draw lives and anyway, if the game is paused so game dot state dot paused because if the game is paused we want it to be faded and here we go that shouldn't be an end symbol my bad that should be eight times okay now let's try it there we go so now our lives are right up here as you can see so that's nice Currently, if we hit an asteroid, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to kind of die and then respawn and then hit them again and again and again. We don't want that to happen anymore because we now have lives. We want the player lives to decrease and the player to restart from where he was or she was. So let's go to the top and let's see. And this is not the right file. We go to menu and here it says explode time and then what the explode time does. We can go and say if player dot explode time if that is equal to zero then we want to go if player dot lives minus one is less than zero meaning if the player doesn't have any lives left then game colon change game state to ended because of the player amount of lives minus one is less than zero meaning they have like negative one lives left then end the game and we should make this less or equal to because yeah just because but you can make it less than one if you wanted to because they say the player has one life left now they hit an asteroid now one minus or now the player lives i mean changes to zero and zero minus one that is negative one and that's less than zero so in return it should change the game state to ended because if the player has zero lives left then we don't want the game to continue and then we can just say return because we don't want this to continue the loop or to continue yeah to continue this loop nice otherwise just always go player is equal to and then a new player and then the player dot lives minus one and there we go so now the player will always have one less of a life once they hit this or once they finish exploding and i should save without formatting now if we run this and let's see what happens when we hit this asteroid we lose a life and we start back at the screen. The reason we started back at the center is because we create a new player. And when we create a new player, the player by default is in the center of the screen because that's what we hard coded here in a sense. We basically said, hey, once we create a new player, put them in the center X and Y. And that's what's happening here. We're creating a new player and storing that player in the old player variable. So don't get too confused here. We're just creating a new player object, storing it in here, but it kind of has a lot of the old player stuff. By that, it just means the lives. So yeah, now if we hit an asteroid, we go, we lose a life. Now we have less lives. We hit another asteroid, we lose a life. Let's hit another asteroid here. And uh, there we go. Now the game has changed to ended state. Okay meaning it's basically over. Now, I still want to do a few more things before we continue. So here, if destroy asked, we can now go if and then else. Now, instead of the else, we can now put this. And in this if statement can check player dot lives minus one. If that is less or equal to zero, then we want to go if player dot explode time is that is equal to zero as well then we want to set this here as well so basically if the player lives is less or equal to zero basically the same check we did here however this check will not execute quite as quickly because this one will execute after this check. So this check may be false. Then this executes where this check could be true, but it executed after this. So see, this executed after this right here, so after the check. So player lives here could still be two. 
Then we go here and then player lives is one. Because remember, code goes from up to down. So we're doing the same thing here, but now it's here at the bottom. And since it's going up to down, it will trigger this. And then we check if the explode time is equal to zero, then just do everything as normal. However, if the explode time is not equal to zero, then just don't do anything at all. The reason for this is once we basically finish the game, yeah, once we basically get to the last asteroid and we hit that asteroid with our player, it can cause a few issues. And this will just cause, or this will just fix a bug in the future. But you don't have to worry too much about this. Just put that there. We save our game, we run our game, and now we fly, we hit, we respawn. We wait for our targets to come back, we fly, we hit, we respawn. And now for the last one, we fly, we hit, it doesn't get destroyed immediately. And that is exactly what we want because that could cause errors because let's say that's the very last asteroid before we go to the next level. And then it wants to go to the next level once we hit it. But once we hit it, we, and we have our last life there, it's not going to be a good match because let's say we only have one life left and there's only one asteroid left. Once we hit that asteroid and we lose our one life, it wants to go to the next level. And this is in the future once we implement levels. But if it wants to go to the next level, and we just lost our last life, that's going to cause a few errors. And so we say, if we hit against an asteroid with our last life, then it's game over. Then we don't get that point or anything like that. And cool. So that is that for adding player lives. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next Love2D tutorial.